How can nature help us feel well? When I have a worry-filled mind I like to wander outside No telling what we might find Birds calling, worms crawling Leaves falling down from above Oh, I plant my feet on the ground I keep my head in the clouds I let my feelings out loud I hear joy calling Fear crawling Tears falling down Out of love My name is Mrs. A, and we always start off by taking some time to notice and name our feelings. Feelings can be really confusing sometimes or really overwhelming at others. And so it's important that we practice noticing and naming our feelings, especially when we feel calm and settled, especially when our brain is clear. So today we're going to practice naming our color zone. These are the zones of regulation. And we all experience a lot of different feelings throughout the day. And sometimes we may not even have the words to describe the emotion that we are noticing, but we could grab a color or point to something that is the color of the zone that we're in. Now, each zone represents something a little different. So let me tell you a bit more. The blue zone is when we are feeling really tired or slow moving. Our bodies may feel heavy. Our brains may feel a little foggy. We may be sick or lonely or sad. The green zone represents when we are feeling comfortable. We're feeling settled in our body. Our brains are clear. We may be feeling peaceful. We may be feeling confident. We may be feeling ready to go. The yellow zone represents when we feel like we're starting to lose control. Our brains may be getting a little bit busy. Maybe we're feeling anxious or worried about something. Maybe we're feeling frustrated or confused or unsure. And the red zone represents when we feel like we have lost control. We are feeling really overwhelmed by our big feelings. We may have a loud voice. We may be stomping our feet. We may have big body movements and we may feel really angry. We may feel really out of control, like our brain is totally jumbled up. And no matter what you're feeling, no matter what zone you're in, there are no good or bad feelings or emotions. They come and go and change. And for all of us, our feelings may be something that really take over from time to time. And that's why it's so helpful for us to notice and name them, especially when we're feeling calm or settled. So go ahead and think about what you're feeling right now. Did you identify with any of the ways I described you might be feeling? Do you feel like you're out of control and in the red zone? Grab something red or point to something red. Do you feel like your brain is starting to get busy or your body is feeling jittery? Maybe you're in the yellow zone. Grab something yellow. Think about the other color zones and go ahead and grab an object that matches the zone you're in right now. I'll do the same. Did you find your object? Wonderful. Let's all say the zone we're in right now. Green. Thanks for sharing. Now you may already know, but I wanted to remind you, if you are feeling in the red zone, like you've lost control or you're out of control, there are really helpful tools or strategies you can use to help yourself feel a little more comfortable or a little more settled. We talk about many of them on my show, so if you haven't watched any previous episodes, go ahead and check them out and see what you can find. And we'll also practice one together today, just like we always do. We'll practice moving our body, building our muscles, and warming up our bodies and clearing our heads. It's a really great way for us to help settle our brains and bodies if we're feeling really overwhelmed or really out of control. And we always use the date to help us with our exercises. And my friend Fig. So 
let's check in with the date and check out what Big has to show us today. The date for me is 5 slash 23 slash 22. And you may be watching this video on a different day. You can always change the numbers to match your date or stick with mine, whatever you prefer. Now, like I said, we're going to use those numbers to help us exercise. But we also have our friend Big here who shows us one of the moves. Do you see what they're doing? You can make some observations, look carefully, see what you notice, and then make some guesses. Fig will let us know in a little bit what move they're showing us, but you can make your guesses and try to figure out what you think it is. To start us off, we're going to do five arm stretches, and we can do these sitting or standing, so get in a position that's comfortable for you. We're going to stretch our arms by putting one arm straight out, kind of at an angle away from us, and the other arm will almost hug it. We'll get a good stretch up in our upper arm. We'll do five of these. So you can alternate arms, change arms if you'd like, or stick with one. Let's count by ones. Two, three, four, five, All right, now let's check in with Fig. They have 23 moves. What do you think they're showing us? Yes, twists. Fantastic. So again, you can do twists sitting or standing, get in a comfortable position, and we'll count by ones once more, all the way up to 23. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Fabulous job. And finally, we have 22 moves to do. I thought we could do 22 hops, like little bunny hops. So not really tall jumps, but small hops. Let's count by twos while we do our hops because 22 is an even number. And even numbers are a way that we can practice counting a little differently, counting by twos. So that means we'll skip all of the odd numbers when we count. Two, four, six, and so on. And if you are not sure how to count by twos yet, that's okay. You can follow along and listen to my numbers and keep practicing anytime you see an even number. Ready? Let's do 22 hops, count my twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two. Ooh. How old was your hopping? <laughs> that was really fun, but I'm feeling like my heart is beating quickly, my body is warmed up. So I'm going to take three cool down breaths. When you hear a bell, will you breathe with me? Let's do it. Amazing job, my friends. At the beginning of this episode, I asked if you thought how nature could help us feel well. And the reason I asked that question is because May, the fifth month, is actually Mental Health Awareness Month. That means our brain's health and our mental health, our thoughts, our ideas, how we feel, is all about mental health this month in May. And so I wanted to tell you a bit about how nature can be so beneficial to our brains and our bodies and help us feel well. And we're going to talk a lot about nature and the connections we have to nature and how nature can help us feel well. And before we do that, before we look at these books or read this message, I wanted to see if you can solve a mystery riddle. You may have spotted my mystery box here, but I don't have my riddle up yet. That's where you come in. Can you help me with a little bit of magic? Oh, great. Okay. In order to make this happen, you can rub your hands and use that magic. You can snap your fingers if you know how to do that. Or you can stomp your feet and send all your magic my way. 
we're gonna do a countdown and then my riddle should appear. Will you help me? Fabulous. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Oh, it worked. Amazing. Okay, here I have our mystery riddle. And it will help us figure out what is in this box. So listen carefully and look closely at the words and hear what it says. Ready? I start out small, but I can be tall. I need some care, like water, sun, and air. You can plant me in the ground or buy me by the pound. I share beauty, feed birds and bees, and help people with their snacking needs. What am I? We can use some of our senses to help us here. We can't use our sense of sight because it's hiding in this mystery box, but we can use our sense of sound. Let's listen to see what's inside. Interesting. I can also use my sense of touch and let you know that this box is really, really light. I can toss it in the air easily. It is not heavy at all. Really like sounds like oh, sound. That's another one of our senses. It sounds like there are small things shifting around in here. Do you have any guesses? Something that starts small but can grow tall. Needs water, sun, and air. You can plant it in the ground. You can buy it by the pound. And it feeds birds and bees, and oh, helps people with their snacking needs. What do you think? Oh, I think you might be right. They are so tiny. Look at these. Seeds. It looks like these are sunflower seeds. I can tell because sunflower seeds have a pretty distinct shape and they are seeds that I've seen a lot of. We have some teeny tiny ones and some really, really big ones. Have you ever seen a sunflower seed before? Have you ever eaten a sunflower seed? Me too. Have you ever planted or grown a sunflower? Oh, marvelous. Oh, nice job trying to figure out that mystery riddle. If you solved it, great. I hope you're feeling proud. If you didn't solve it yet, that's okay. I have lots of other mystery riddles you can try in many other episodes, and I'll also be sharing more throughout the summer. So if you haven't already hit that red subscribe button, now's a great time to do it so you'll get a little reminder next time I share one. Now, I need your magic once more. Will you please help send me some of your superpowers? Go ahead and rub your hands, snap your fingers, or stomp your feet. Ready? Three, two, one. Thank you so much. Okay, as I mentioned, we're gonna talk a bit about how nature can help us feel well and all of our connections to nature, and I'm really excited. So let's dive into this message for today. And while we're reading, be on the lookout for those alliterations and onomatopoeias. Ready? Bienvenidos, beautiful people. Just like seedlings, we all need a little care to grow and live healthy lives. Since May is Mental Health Awareness Month, I wanted to share some ways that we can all practice taking care of ourselves and each other. Considering we're all connected, like everything in our natural world, it's important for us to take time to treat ourselves and our neighbors near and far with love and gentleness. We'll read some stories today that help us see some of those connections and get us thinking about ways we can practice caring for ourselves and others. Love, Mrs. A. Now, like I said, I am so excited to read these stories with you, and I have three special stories to share. So let's take a peek. This first one is a favorite of mine. It is called Up in the Garden and Down in the Dirt, and it's by Kate Messner, with art by Christopher Silas Neal. And if you've been watching season two, you may know that I featured another one of Kate Messner's books earlier in the season. It's all about being up above and under the pond. 
and it is another really beautiful story that you should check out if you haven't already. Now we're going to look at some pages in this one, up in the garden, down in the dirt. Up in the garden, rain shower! Nana turns the hose on me. Eee! <laughs> Have you ever played outside with the hose or a sprinkler? That is one way that we can actually help our mental health running, playing, and just being outside. I hide behind the cucumber vines, but their leaves can't save me. I shiver and laugh, drenched in Nana's rain. Down in the dirt, water soaks deep. Roots drink it in and a long-legged spider still walks over the streams. <laughs> Have you ever watered a plant? I like how they describe that the roots drink up the water. When we are feeling really overwhelmed or uncomfortable or really tired or slow moving, drinking water can help us too, just like it helps the plants. Up in the garden, there's so much to eat. Ladybugs feast on aphids. Nana crunches green beans. I bite a ripe tomato, warm from the sun. Juice dribbles down my chin. Do you see another example of how we can help our mental health and feel well? Yes, eating fresh fruits and fresh vegetables. Vegetables and fruits are so good for our bodies and they help our brain grow strong and healthy. And so even growing a little tomato plant in a pot outside your door or growing a little cucumber in a pot by your window will give you some fruits and some vegetables to munch and crunch and will help you feel well. Now, there are so many other beautiful examples in this book, and as you can see, detailed and fantastic illustrations. So please check out that book, Up in the Garden and Down in the Dirt. You can grab it from your local library or visit the description to see my bookshop link. Now this next book is called Swirl by Swirl, and it's all about spirals in nature. And it is by Joyce Sidman with pictures by Beth Cronitz. And I thought this book was so cool because it talks about all of the different spirals and swirls that we can find out in nature. And when I saw the cover and immediately saw that snail, I thought about being in the garden where I often see snails and slugs. And even on the back, there are other beautiful examples of creatures you may see in your garden or plants that you may grow. And so we're gonna look at some pages together. And then we'll actually have a mindful moment in a little bit that connects to the story. A spiral is a snuggling shape. It fits neatly in small places. Coiled tight, warm, and safe, it waits. Do you see any swirls or spirals? If you look really closely, you can see that the creatures are labeled bull snake, harvest mouse, eastern chipmunk, woodchuck, As a reminder, it's coiled tight, warm, and safe. It waits for a chance to expand. Do you see those creatures? They are not swirled or snuggled up anymore. They've expanded and stretched out. A spiral is a growing shape. It starts small and gets bigger. Swirl. Do you see any other examples of nature's creatures that have swirls or spirals? Have you ever found something out in nature that has a swirl or a spiral? A roly poly, a millipede. Oh, yes, great examples. Now, this book has many, many more examples, and I love that they're all labeled. So be sure to grab this one. And like I said, We'll also do a mindful moment connected to it, so make sure you stick around for that. Now, this final book, Be a Tree, 
is another fabulous one. You can tell I'm really excited about all of our books today. And this is written by Maria Gian Ferrari, illustrated by Felicia Tessal. And this is all about how we are like trees. Be a tree. And there are some great examples of how we can take care of ourselves and others by being a tree. Let's look at some pages. Be a tree. Stand tall. Stretch your branches to the sun. Have you ever stretched your body as high as you can? Tried to touch the sun or the sky or even your ceiling inside? Beneath your bark are layers such as sapwood carrying nutrients to help you grow bigger and taller and heartwood strong as bone to support you. When we talked about eating fruits and vegetables to help keep you healthy, it makes me think of how your body transfers all those nutrients, all of those good things from those foods to help you grow big and strong. And your bones, just like this tree has really hard wood, it are hard to help keep your shape and support you. I love that. And now, look around you. You are not alone. You are one of many trees. And like I said, this book is all about how we are like trees. And so really, when you look around, if we are like trees and we're one of many, do you think, who else is also like a tree? Yeah, all the people beside you and in your community. And I love this book because it talks about how trees interact with each other and help other trees in their community. And it is such a wonderful book about us and nature and how we're all connected and how there's enough for all of us and how we can all help each other at different times when we have different needs. So be sure to grab that one as well. Like I said, I'm so excited about all of these books today and I hope you enjoy them just as much as I do. Let's get to our mindful moment, which is connected to swirl by swirl, as I mentioned. And this one is a stretch. So we are going to move or bend our body in some interesting ways. Now, it is tricky for humans to make swirl shapes with their entire bodies. So what I'd like us to do is something that we saw in the book or something similar, where we get really cuddled up and squeeze tightly. Ooh, get into a little tiny ball or as small as we're able to. And then we're going to stretch out and expand, just like those creatures did. So find a comfortable space, maybe on the floor, maybe on a mat or on a rug that you have. And let's squeeze into a tiny, tiny shape. And then we'll expand. And we'll do this three times. Ready to try it? Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Be really small. Okay, let's expand. Stretch, stretch, stretch really big. Okay, two more. This time I want you to try to breathe in as you squeeze small, and then we'll breathe out when we expand. Ready? Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Okay, expand. Amazing. One more time. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Okay, expand. What did you notice about your brain or your body as you were doing that mindful moment? Hmm. Me too. Oh, thanks for sharing. Yeah, I felt like I was really tight and tense and then really relaxed when we stretched out. I noticed different parts of my body felt different. That was pretty neat. Now, mindfulness activities are different things that might help you feel well or clear your head or feel more settled or comfortable. And each episode has a different mindfulness activity. So you can go back and check them out or try them all and see which one works best for your brain and your body. Now, I want to challenge you to try a mindfulness activity next time you're outside. Go ahead and look for something with a swirl might be a flower coiled up. 
It might be a bug that you find, but I want you to look really mindfully, really carefully, and try to just focus noticing squirrels. I'd love to see what you find if you want to snap a picture or tell me about it in an email. You can find that below in my description. While you're down there, make sure to hit that red subscribe button if you haven't yet. And friends, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Sending off with some love if you'd like it. A hug if you want it. I can't wait to see you next time.